Hi everyone, my name is KM. I'm an associate professor in the School of Life Sciences at the Chinese University of Hong Kong. This video, which is entitled In Vitro Cytotoxicity Assays, concerns the use of cultured cells in performing toxicity studies. Although a long list of chemicals and drugs are, is available for various applications, some of these substances may have potential adverse effects on the environment and human health. Certain chemicals require rapid screening, and new laws and regulations have been introduced around the world, especially in the European Union, requiring new substances to be examined using inexpensive and high throughput in vitro testing using primary cultured cells or immortal cell lines. This video comprises three sections which aim to explain one, why we conduct in vitro cell studies, two, how we conduct the assays and the principles of the assays, and three, what toxicity means and the types of data we need to acquire to learn the toxic effects of certain chemicals and drugs. Let's start with the first slide, which explains why we conduct in vitro toxicity assays. First, although animal tests can provide pathological information, these tests have ethical concerns. Second, in vitro tests or tests conduct inside test tube using cells grown from an organ can be used to test the toxic effects of substance on specific tissues. Third, in vitro tests enable us to screen minimal quantities of chemicals. Fourth, we can even study specific subcellular pathways such as signaling pathways and oxidative stress. However, in vitro toxicity assays cannot fully substitute in vivo assays. There are pros and cons of in vivo and in vitro assays. This table compares the two methods. In vivo studies require approval for animal experimentation from an animal ethics committee, whereas cell assays have no such ethical concerns although they do require good cell culture facilities. Although in vivo studies also require the relevant facility, they can be used to study developmental and embryonic effects, and lifetime or even transgeneration effects. Although in vitro studies can only be used to study particular individual cell types, they can also be used to study the molecular mechanisms inside the cells, and the test only requires small amount of chemicals. This is particularly important if the test chemical is a toxic chemical compound because we do not want to use large amounts of such toxic chemicals. In vivo studies, can be used to study the tissue distribution and the pharmacokinetics in the body as a whole. These diagrams give you an idea of the operational scales of both types of tests. To study actual fish, a fish tank or many tanks will be needed. If using in vitro cell culture, only 96 well plates are needed to grow the cells. However, if whole fish are used, the various organs can be dissected to determine the distribution and bioconcentration of the chemicals being tested and the metabolic and biomarker responses to them. To sum up, why can in vitro tests not replace in vivo tests. First, the chemicals may be metabolized inside the whole body rather than specific organs. Second, we can conduct live long 
in vivo test. Third, in vivo tests enable us to determine the presence of chemicals in multiple organs and their distribution in the body as a whole. Fourth, specific systems such as the reproductive system and respiratory system can be examined in vivo. Fifth, different rules of entry such as the skin, inhalation, and gut can be tested in vivo. Finally, we can calculate and model the toxicokinetic effects in terms of uptake and removal or clearance and calculate the half-life of the chemicals in the body. This figure taken from the textbook by Fresne entitled Cultured of Animal Cells shows the evolution of a cell line. The y-axis indicates the cell number, and the x-axis shows the duration of the culture. At day zero, of course, the cell number is low. Starting with the primary cell culture, the cells can barely survive and are maintained in the culture medium until the cells transform into a cell line. Once transformed, the cell number increases and subcultures with zero passages need to be formed to keep the cell line alive. Otherwise, the cell will not have enough culture medium and room to grow. For the transform the cell line to become a continuous cell line, the cells need to become immortal. However, in practice, after too many passages, the cells become senescent and eventually die. To maintain cultured cells, we need suitable culture lab wear and culture media to provide the nutrients for the specific cell types and sufficient osmotic pressure for the cells to grow properly. Some cells require an extracellular matrix to grow and need to attach to a special solid surface. The basal media usually contains sugars as an energy source and mineral source to maintain the osmotic pressure and provide ions for the cells. The culture media require growth factors that can be found, for instance, in fetal calf serum. The media must contain enough amino acids, purine and primidine for nucleotide synthesis, choline and inositol for the phospholipids and vitamins. Please check the media from the cell suppliers such as ATCC, American Type Culture Collection, and Riken from Japan. The most expensive facility for growing cell cultures is the culture room, which includes a culture hood and incubator. Culture rooms usually have a class 2 hood with multiple HEPA filters to protect the lab workers and the culture products. As you can see here, the technician can sit right next to the hood and work on the cells and to change media without any contamination. In the middle, you can see two incubators with closed doors with the temperature set at 37 degrees Celsius for mammalian cells and 28 degrees Celsius for fish cells or insect cells. The inside of the hood needs to be sterilized using UV light and cleaned with alcohol contained in the wash bottle before and after use. I have talked long enough. Here is an MCQ multiple choice question for you to complete. Cytotoxicity assays do not 
aim to A, replace a whole animal study, B, study the mechanism of toxic effects, C, provide a standardized and quantitative assay, D, provide a sublethal assay, E, present a miniature scale of chemical use. The answer is, of course, A. Cytotoxicity assay do not aim to replace whole animal tests. You will also need to know what kinds of cells you are working on and their origins. After forming a blastocyst in the embryo, embryonic stem cells can be isolated for cell culture. In an embryo, in vivo, three layers of cells are formed, namely the ectoderm, mesoderm, and nanoderm, which grow into different cell types such as the brain, hair, skin, muscle, liver, and the gut. For example, the hepatobras and hepatocytes in the liver are divided from the endoderm cells of the foregut. Hepatomesangimus from the mesoderm can also be found in the liver with different properties. The propagation of in vitro cell culture has led to developments in tissue engineering. You may watch these videos for more information. Cell differentiation is facilitated by manipulating the cell media by adding different factors and can lead to the regeneration of new organs or tissues. For instance, skin cells obtained from a patient's body can be grown and reprogrammed into different types of cells for use in cell therapy or as a disease model. Stem cells can also be used to make a variety of cells such as liver cells, cardiac cells, nerve cells, blood cells, and muscle cells. Lastly, before we finish this video on cytotoxicity assays, we must define the exact meaning of cytotoxicity. Do we want to test the effect on gene expression? As in this example, here, GFP reflorescence signals is affected at different doses as shown along the x-axis and at different times with different colors from black to red and green as shown along the y-axis. Or, do we want to study the effects on different cell sizes? The experiment shown here with HeLa GFP cells can reveal the different patterns of effects on the different cell sizes. Or do we want to test the cell numbers? Or the cell shapes? Obviously, the cell number is easier to study. Thank you for watching this video. The next video shows how to perform your cytotoxicity assays.